find our way to what the next header is and then pretty much just kind of do sort of like a shift select but uh, right now we're just going to go through and we're just going to kind of try to get all this data here the fastest way I know how and uh, we sat there I sat there talking for a minute so there is a significant amount of frames here um, the animation recorded at 30 frames per second so it recorded at basic American standard NTSC um, and I talked for a good long time so we actually have a lot of frames we're gonna go ahead and try to do this a little bit faster Let's see um, obviously the reason why I don't like doing that is because you know now we're in the thick of some other data that we don't need already um, okay so let's keep page downing here and okay so now we know in the future um, 2d point frame data is pretty much the last piece of data that or is where the next data begins so we can pretty much shift click here uh, and it'll take from the point that we ended up at right down to this point here pretty much give us all that data and uh, if we go up you can see that we pretty much got all the data we were looking for just make sure we can keep going up and we can pretty much let me come back down a little bit and we're just kind of going a little fast here but yeah we pretty much got all our data so we can hit control C or command C on Mac to copy um, and then we can go ahead and make a new text document and we can paste that data in here and now all we have is our 3861 3, frames of facial animation data um, which if we open up our trusty calculator here and divide by standard NTSC looks like it was 128 seconds 60 seconds in a minute about two minutes worth of, uh, of talking alright and there's some of this data we can obviously cut out um, so we'll go ahead and save that as and I like to save these things as um, depending upon the production um, you know as good take or uh, you know character underscore take one underscore face data or you know something that's going to be pretty indicative of whatever the naming convention for your particular character and uh, whatever's going to be um, I guess we can give this character a name we can go ahead and call her Testa uh, for test character test female character Testa it's kind of funny to me I don't know a little humor there um, and uh, we can call this take one and uh, call this face cap. So testa underscore take one underscore face cap. So testa take one, testa underscore take one underscore face cap. Uh, face cap. That's, should be face cap. And um, go ahead and save that. Now, just to show you, um, this truly is CSV data, and it's it's very editable. Um, I can't imagine why you would want to edit it, but um, you could actually come into Excel here, or any spreadsheet program that's going to allow you to read uh, CSV files, and you can go to 3D modeling, and go to your uh, importing from DAS folder and you can go to uh, mocap and uh, you can change this to uh, all files so you can open up any files and you could open up your text file here and it's going to come up with your uh, 
Excel dialog that allows you to basically take a delimited file, comma, or tab delimited file and pretty much convert it into a spreadsheet. You click next. Um, it's tab delimited. So now look at the data. It's, it's very nicely organized. Um, click next and you can click finish and lo behold um, you've got your shape data in a very very nice human readable easy to see fashion you can see exactly where your animation is going you can see what's moving noticing here that K pretty much didn't pick up any animation at all um, what animation unit is this related to it'd be the second to last so it looks like upper lip down didn't pick up any animation for whatever reason my, my upper lip just wasn't moving down for some particular reason I guess but uh you know so it's a really good it's this is a really great way to check your data make sure it's consistent make sure everything worked out okay you know there's a little bit of movement here on this unit and there's probably some movement there on K as well um, you come in here, you have a little bit of movement there. Come in here, and you could do all sorts of crazy stuff with Excel. Excel is a very, very great program. So we are done with our face cap conversion, and this is uh, ready for the script. All right. So we'll go ahead and close this out. And uh, in Cinema 4D here, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a null that can contain um, our data that we're going to import. So let's come over here and we'll create a quick null and uh, we can name it anything. Uh, we'll call it testa underscore face cap underscore take one something descriptive and uh, we're gonna need to operate this with some espresso at some point um to have it drive our pose morphs that we got from Daz right here. Um in order to do so we're gonna need some user data to hold the information that's about to come in through this script. So let's go to our user data here and we're gonna go ahead and manage user data. And we're gonna go ahead and add some uh, new data to our user data field. All right. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to come in here. We're going to need to give this user data very specific names. Um, a good way to do this, um, cancel, and to easily make sure that we don't uh, do any typos or whatever, is we could uh, go ahead and actually copy from my script the exact names that we need. Or, for that matter, we get the exact names that we need directly from uh, the Breakle Connect data, which is great. Um, if we go to Notepad, the great thing about the Breakle Connect data is it's going to kind of sort of be extremely clean, um, although we're going to have to wait for it to load up again. So I'm just going to pause the video and... Uh, wait till that finishes. Alright guys, so it's done. And uh, our data is pretty much right here. It's very nicely named and it's got pretty much the same spaces and breaks that this data here in the uh, script has. So we can just go ahead and copy that. Or better yet, we could actually just leave it alone and just push it off to the side on our second screen or wherever we need it. I'm just going to basically copy it from the second screen. I'll be just selecting the data here and I'll just be doing a right click copy or a control C to pretty much paste it into the user data fields. So with that data off to the side and ready for us to use, we can go into our user data, manage our user data and we can add data here. And uh, we pretty much already got browser enter up copied so we can go ahead and do a control V there to paste it. Um, and we can set our data type to 
float and we can set our unit to real the interface to float as well and uh, what's happening here we want to make it animatable as well what's happening here is the data type that we're getting from Brakel script is uh, float data these are uh, these are point values from 0 to 1 we want all that we all we want all that point data so that we can um, animate our data real nice um, and that float data is basically uh, real numbers um, any numbers between um, zero in the positive and neg uh, in, in the positive and negative direction um, our step for our uh, slider um, I like to set this to point 0.1 um, since it's a value between 1 and 0 um, what this will do in our slider is it'll give us this fine control here where we can kind of sort of drag our slider up by small small values here it's really good um, the slider min and max I also like to set between 0 and 1 since that is range of our values and our default value can be zero and then we pretty much need to do this for every single uh, user data field that we need to create so we can create this one we can do a control C from our notepad file that's off to the side it automatically updates our short name and we pretty much have got all our values perfectly fine in here. Do another control and drag down and uh, do another control C from our text file and do a control V real fast to paste it in here and then do another control drag and uh, we can pretty much just keep doing this until we get all 11 or so animation values. Um, as the Xbox Connect SDK improves, we will uh, eventually probably have a lot more morphs that we can deal with. Um, this is all really new, exciting stuff that's going on. Um, the Connect is consistently improving. Uh, creators like Face Shift and uh, Brakel are just consistently creating new applications. Uh, Microsoft themselves are in their labs doing interesting things with the uh, reconstruction of human figures through the use of the Connect as a 3D scanner. Just amazing things are going on. Um, I'll probably be creating a tutorial about Reconstruct Me, which is another amazing tool that actually allows you to use the connect as a 3D scanner and scan yourself or scan objects in as I thought I had messed up there for a second guys sorry but I was all good um yeah use yourself or use objects as 3D models it's it's amazing all right so control drag here do this, upper lip down, and finally, last but not least, our jaw open user data. And uh, there we go, we've got all our user data. Um, if we wanted to, we could even add this user data under another group and call it animation units, and then we could actually have a really nice user data field here called animation units uh, should be very indicative of what we were doing with our animation data I'm not going to do that but it uh, would be very interesting right now it's just coming up as user data which is not bad not necessarily good either hit control s to save our project pretty religious about that um, and then we can close the uh, Brickle Connect uh, original data. We don't need this anymore. We've pretty much copied out all the names. And we've got all our data in here ready to be used. So it would be awesome if the FBX format importer for 